Welcome everyone to the session Mapping Groundwater Levels, Data Analysis and Representation with Jesse Rouse. Jesse is an Assistant Professor of Geography at UNC Pembroke, focusing on GIS, geospatial technologies, and cultural geography. So we welcome Jesse and we welcome all of you. I would ask that you all please join the chat feature and put in any questions or comments that you have throughout the presentation and we'll get to those at the end. And just for everyone's information, all these presentations are being recorded and will be available on the YouTube channel following the conference. With that, Jesse, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome. I hope everyone is having a, a good morning at the beginning of the conference. Uh, today I will be talking about uh, a project that's going on through UNC Pembroke that is looking at specifically groundwater level. We've been working on it for three years now through um, funding from the Robson County Public um, Utilities Department. And uh, basically right now we're just trying to uh, finalize our baseline data with these first three years of data and begin to figure out where we're gonna go in the future um, with this. So one of the first things that we did was begin to look at not just uh, you know where we're looking at in terms of Robinson County, but the larger uh, idea of the aquifer itself. We're largely in the Black Creek, uh, Creek Aquifer, um, which runs through a large portion of Eastern North Carolina. Whenever we uh, consider that, um, in our area, we have a lot of wells that are going into basically that what is considered a confined aquifer. So we have clay above, of course, sand in the aquifer, clay below. Um, we are seeing some examples of potentially um, not as quite as confined as uh, originally thought in some areas of our county, but uh, that's one of our long-term projects to look at in the future. So we have public wells uh, that exist uh, throughout the aquifer and throughout the county. Some of these are uh, North Carolina, uh, USGS, and South Carolina wells uh, that are just surrounding the, uh, our county. And as we look at these, we're trying to get an understanding of not just what's going on in the county, but getting around some of those uh, boundary issues. If we had just had data in the county, uh, we'd have, of course, a drop off uh, at the edges of the county. And we're, seeing, we're using these data points from around the county, again, from these other sources, such as NCDEQ, South Carolina, uh, Department of Environmental Protection and USGS to uh, substitute areas that we don't necessarily have detailed data in. Now for the project itself, we have 13 wells that have been uh, drilled specifically for the project or were existing wells in the county. And so between these, we have a number of wells that we can look at in the county and those that are within 50 miles of the county so that we can utilize those to, again, maintain a little bit better data accuracy for our understanding of water levels, water elevations in this area. As we uh, have moved forward with the project, it's really been driven by, uh, again, this need by the county itself, Rouse County Public Utilities, to have data long-term, to have an understanding of what's going on uh, with the uh, water levels in the county, especially in the summertime, but also of course the recharge period over the winter. And so we have uh, utilized that funding from them to help students. Uh, we have had interns, um, we've have uh, long-term student employees as part of the project, and they're doing the majority of the work for this project going out, uh, taking data from existing wells, converting that into um, basically these visual representations of what the wells are. This is both the wells that we're using, but also um, not public wells. So private wells that have been drilled over the years. Of course, we have tons of records through NCDEQ and other sources, 
where we can get an understanding of what, whenever the well was really originally drilled, things looked like. So we're taking advantage of that information and long-term we'll be using that to, sub um, to support our information that we have uh, that we're collecting regularly from the wells. We have students going out collecting data at the wells, uh, the ones that are our specific 13 wells in the county. Uh, again, we're also capturing the uh, data that's publicly available for the uh, NCDEQ, South Carolina and USGS wells. With these wells, we're um, doing a combination of manual capture so that we're ground truthing our data collectors that are living in the wells. So we go out once a month or so, um, collect the data using um, electric tape that lets us know when we're hitting the water. And we're comparing that then to the pressure that we're utilizing to then derive uh, water elevation in the area. As we um, take a quick look at the data that we're bringing down, uh, we're using Level Scout as uh, the brand that we're using for our sensors, both in terms of what's in this, uh, the well itself, as well as barometric sensors. Um, and we're doing this on a 30 minute interval. So our 13 wells are being collected um, every 30 minutes. Then once a month, we're going out, collecting that data coming in and uh, converting that into uh, a uniform well depth. Again, utilizing student um, activity through this process as well. Um, there's a lot of, of course, introduction to these ideas. We've had now about four generations of students going through on the three-year project uh, with people, of course, graduating at uh, different intervals. Um, and of course, most majors don't really get into the point where they're really, uh, really ready to become part of these projects until they're uh, maybe late sophomore, early junior. So we really get most students for a year, maybe two years at the most. So um, we have a lot of, of course, turnover, which means that uh, on the faculty end of this, a lot of this is, uh, you know, just getting students up to speed uh, and hopefully making sure that they can pass this on to other future students in the project as well. We are then going through and uh, taking the well uh, pressure information, converting that to uh, as you can see here, utilizing the barometric pressure over to depths below surface, and then using that depth below surface to measure out to uh, elevation itself. So understanding how high the water is um, in terms of above sea level, uh, in our county at least, helps us uh, be able to compare that to the elevation around the area. We also have an understanding uh, through this of the different wells through looking at hydrographs. So just going through and graphing the data that we have. And as you can see that uh, as we go through the various seasons, we get a lot of variation going on. You can also see here in Alamac uh, in uh, September of 2018, we had a very uh, significant spike. That's the representation of a hurricane. You'll see that in the other three that are about to be overlaid on this. Now the uh, elevation values for each of these are not um, the same. We're using different uh, Y values here because each of the wells are in different parts of the county. But we're just overlaying them just to get you give you an idea of uh, the fact that we do have general trends, which again, that hurricane had a very significant impact on our water levels for a while, uh, but even that isn't consistent in various places. So this is one of the reasons why we're beginning to wonder about uh, the confinement of the, the well itself, or the, sorry, of the aquifer itself in some of these areas, because we do have very different responses whenever we have things like uh, a hurricane. So you can see that Sam Noble Prospect and Ballard here all stayed pretty high after the, uh, the major rain event, whereas Alamac had a significant draw. Now, some of that might be tied to agriculture, but again, it's one of the long-term projects that we're trying to uh, follow up on to get a better understanding of what's going on 
in these areas. Of course, we're more interested here in the geospatial data. And so we're taking those averages, monthly averages that we create uh, in the previous step and begin to map those out, both in terms of weekly maps and monthly maps. But here we're just gonna focus on some of our monthly maps, specifically our 2020 maps. <coughs> Excuse me. As we look at these, um, starting in January, we can begin to look at various areas of interest. So you'll notice that uh, in this Western portion of the county, there's a little bit of an inclusion of lower uh, elevations of water. And we also, if we zoom in just a bit on this area in the Eastern portion of the county, we can see that uh, we have this little bit of uh, an inclusion over here on the edge. Now I do encourage you to check out the poster session tomorrow. Uh, one of our students has uh, done a presentation about the influence that uh, one of these wells, this one right here, is having on uh, the edge of our county because it's uh, being so heavily influenced by the fact that it's sitting right on the Cape Fear River. So it's uh, depth of water and therefore water elevation is much lower than uh, the values that we're getting in our county in this northeastern edge. As we continue to uh, forward through the uh, months, we can begin to see both that one area as remaining in each of these. But really, we're seeing the most change uh, over here in this western area. Now we're seeing uh, various changes as we get into the summer, as uh, water levels go down in general. But again, it's really that impact in this area that we're trying to begin to look at and try to understand uh, whether we're seeing some impact in terms of the well itself, localized issues, these type of uh, ideas. As we continue on, we can look at differences between different months. So here we have on the left, the difference in uh, water elevations between January 2020 and April 2020. Those areas that are the darkest green represent uh, basically a rise in water levels of 13 meters. Uh, and we actually have areas where water's going down 13 meters, which is quite significant whenever we're talking about, uh, you know, uh, meters as opposed to feet. Uh, over between April and July, we get much more kind of what we expect where we have data values that are ranging, um, you know, going up one meter or down five meters. So much more of a, an, an expected range of variation. And we can see that the uh, rise in uh, January to April correlates heavily with those areas that were uh, a drop from April to July. As I said, we have a lot of work coming up uh, in the future. We're looking at continued data collection and data correction. Um, as of course we have students doing a lot of this work, uh, the first couple of times they go out into the field, they bring back the correct data because of course that's being captured by the logger, but they're not always entering it into our system correctly. So we're dealing with some of those issues. It's one of the reasons why we're still living in Excel as, opposing, uh, as opposed to moving uh, as we plan to long-term into a more robust database system but it allows them to have more easy access and allows us to uh, interact with it a little bit more uh, regularly and easily. We're reaching out to local public water suppliers in, within the county to find out where their wells are, uh, to see whether or not this is having an impact on what we're observing uh, in the wells that we're monitoring. So are, do they have nearby wells that are pulling heavily at certain times versus others? Uh, we're also, beginning to do a, uh, a land cover classification for the area to try to figure out where we might have um, heavily pumped fields. So yeah, irrigation fields that are coming not from surface water, but potentially from um, local pumps on certain uh, farms. So we're trying to get an idea of where some of our draw 
is coming from, and of course, trying to better understand the recharge in the wintertime. We're gonna continue on looking at the analyses and begin teasing out some of these new questions that we're seeing in the data, both in terms of doing geostatistical analysis, as well as just simple uh, creaking that we've been doing to understand these uh, water levels, water elevations across the county. We have individual student projects that are related to local groundwater issues that are going on. We have students who are taking um, the cores that were created during the uh, drilling of some of our project specific wells and going through those to try to understand what type of um, you know, profile we're looking at beyond, of course, the data that was provided by the well driller themselves. Uh, and we again have others that are looking at geospatial issues, again, doing land cover classification, looking at um, errant or aberrant um, data values to understand how they might be influencing the overall um, interpolation across the county and uh, continuing projects that we're, we're just now getting into. And that includes sharing the data as an open source resource or as an open resource. Whenever we look at the data, um, again, we have a lot of um, groups that we can look to as to how they have released the data, but we also wanna make sure that we're not just releasing the, releasing the data values, but that we're also releasing some of the data uh, value added products. So our interpolated surfaces, our potentiometric surfaces for the county are one of the things we're also making sure are going into our um, data release and sharing for the open resource. Right now we're just using a website to do that and we'll see that in just a second. Again, here's a quick uh, demo or a quick preview of the poster that's coming up tomorrow. But again, we're seeing how uh, these areas over to the east of our county up in Bladen County are having an impact on that northeastern portion of our project area. And then as we get a quick uh, overview of our groundwater database that we have as a story map, we've provided uh, a number of different layers. So we're uh, of course linking out to the projects that we're taking advantage of. So we're utilizing their web services uh, and making sure people have an understanding that some of our data is coming from other sources. But we're also providing of course now data for our wells themselves, specifically locations of wells, but also looking at um, providing the uh, raw data and the converted elevation data for those wells for others who want to utilize it. And of course, as you're seeing here, looking at the various interpolations and uh, potential metric surfaces that our students are creating for the project as well. So as we look at what we've been putting together over the last three years, um, it starts with the data. It builds from there into uh, our analysis of the data, looking for general trends, beginning to create and disseminate geospatial data and uh, looking for new ways to understand the groundwater uh, issues that are going on in our county, both in terms of draw and you know, looking at the strength of the recharge, which of course right now, since most of our county is flooded is, is uh, something that um, it's definitely going to be an interesting thing to look at as our data for the next couple of months comes in. So that's about it. Um, be great to know if anyone has any questions. Great, thank you, Jesse. I have been um, monitoring the chat and nothing has come through yet. Okay. Um, if anybody is in the session, you do have to click a button to actually join the chat to be able to get in there and, and type anything in and we'll give you some moments to, to do so. Um, very interesting work. I definitely encourage everyone to check out that poster in the poster session. And um, Jesse, I was just wondering your thoughts on what you think about all this recent rain we've had. <laughs> 
uh, it's it is somewhat of uh, a thing where we can point to climate change and, and issues like that. Of course, we can, you know, whenever we're looking at what's going on in Texas and those areas, uh, you know, there's a lot of climate change issues to to try to deal with uh, in terms of how the rain is impacting uh, our groundwater. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, you know, there's that strong interaction between surface water and, and groundwater. Uh, and of course, it means that, you know, really for the next few months, we're probably not going to be in any uh, chance of getting near a, a, a drought. Um, but, yeah. you know, it's, it's one of those things that uh, with the pull on it um, and changes of, of rain as we get into the summertime, we never know what's going to happen. Great. So we do have some questions coming in. Okay. From Emmanuel, what are the challenges of your study? So the biggest challenges, uh, again, I feel are making sure that each of the students as they come into the project is uh, aware of what is going on, as well as, you know, very quickly getting up to speed with what are fairly rudimentary um, responsibilities in terms of long term things that they'll be doing for their jobs. But again, it's their first time uh, getting into hydrogeology, getting into geospatial technologies. So making sure that uh, our short-term employees, which is basically what they are, just very short-term employees, um, have an understanding of, of where things sit and how they're gonna help us move them forward. Now, right. in terms of the project itself, um, it's always the sensors. The sensors are always our, <laughs> our, our weak link. So sometimes we'll have a month where we go out and something has happened to the sensor and we just don't have data. Um, we actually had, we found out about an issue um, just two months ago where um, daylight savings time somehow impacted the, uh, the sensor's time. Mm. And so we missed a whole month of data because the sensor never actually started uh, for that month. So it's, it's always, uh, the hardware's of course, always one of the biggest issues mm. whenever you're doing something. Definitely, you can, um keep an eye on that when the time changes again. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're, we learned. made sure to turn off uh, time change on this, the computer so that yep. <laughs> the computer and the logger will have the same time. So we have a comment from Andrea saying, great job. Look forward to the poster session. Sue has a question. Have people been willing to share their well locations or are they reluctant? Um, this is one of those things that we're just now starting. So we have students who are going through and, and getting this information. Some of them we are pulling from uh, the well driller data from the NCDEQ. So again, we have uh, tons of forms for uh, not only our county, but the surrounding counties that we receive from uh, both well drillers in the area and having go gone up to NCDEQ to the archives. Um, and so we are pulling data from those first before we reach out and you know have people have to uh, spend their time doing some of our work for us um, so we are just now getting into that so we're not sure uh, how that's the response is going to be from the pu uh, public water services mm -hmm. so that was um your response to the Sue's question kind of answered Melanie's, but maybe okay. you have more to add to this. How are you pulling DEQ data into your maps? Um, that is a great question. I, I can't remember. It's been a while now. Uh, <laughs> I believe there's a service. Um, I don't know. I'll, I'll check on that. And uh, if you send me an email, jesse.rouse at uncp.edu, I'll I'll uh, let you know how, if we went through and created that ourselves, but I think there's a service. Okay. Yeah, so Melanie, if you have, um, if you have a real need for an answer to that question, please email Jesse. He's available to, to respond after the conference, yeah. after the session. I'm kind of tempted just to rip into the story map and, and see if, <laughs> <laughs> right. See the source, but I'll I'll not do that. Okay. Well, those were all the questions that have come through on the chat, and we are just about at time. Okay. Um, so I want to thank you again, Jesse, for joining and and sharing um, your research project with us. Um, 
and everyone next up we have a little break from 11 to 11:30, and the concurrent sessions begin again at 11:30. and we have one final comment thank you for the presentation i am very interested in the website you showed and the poster session i also have some information to share about the eastern part of your area great some that you probably already have. That was from Eric Oftenher. I don't know if you know him. Nope. Um, but yeah, Eric, feel free I'll to <laughs> email Jesse. Um, you, G, Jesse Rouse's email information should be in the attendee list that was sent out in the e um, email earlier today. Yeah, and it's in the, uh, the speaker info for the yep. session. Excellent. Thanks for confirming that. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you very much.